Stephen Sam Podcast, episode 26 here. We're back here. Another Pelicans episode. A little bit of a skid for our favorite uh, sports team. And, you know, we'll be back here on YouTube. We're on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We've been – have you been noticing our – like our listeners have been, been pretty pretty high lately, our listening account. Yeah, it um, actually has. Like I just got an email because, like, I get the emails from the uh, – site we used to upload the episodes and it said we had like seven uploads this past week i was like who is still listening to the episodes from like uh, way back when yeah i thought that was pretty cool like we had like do we have like 60 or something like that on the last one i think it was like 50 is it, oh, it might be 60 i know yeah, i think like at least, i think it was like 45 on youtube and then we probably had some on spotify oh yeah i guess i didn't check it whole I, was, I thought you were only talking about youtube um well anyways uh thank you all for the support uh it's been great seeing you know, our viewers go up um youtube's but, 45 yeah cool so we're, we're continuing to be on all those platforms be sure to comment subscribe we have enabled comments on youtube which is great um connor's been doing a little bit of editing which is cool too and, hey what can um, i say I'm a, I'm a nerd man yes a, re- <laughs> a true renaissance man here um <laughs> So, uh, yeah, let's just get into the Pelicans. Do you think that the last four games have been a result of the Pelicans losing or the other teams just being tough matchups and they played better? So that's a good question because when watching the Jazz game, yeah, we had some opportunities to win. But ultimately, like I think you would agree with me, that the Jazz kind of have our number. Yeah, we like I mean, those, even yeah. when we played uh, the Jazz earlier in the year, they still beat us, even with Bi. But I mean, once again, we don't have arguably our best player, so I think the Pelicans will be okay. I do. I do too. Um, I mean, obviously, we're still eighteen and twelve. You know, if we keep up yeah. this rate, you know, we'd be at a we're at a fifty win pace right now. Um, do you believe that man yeah i mean my my problem like i've said is this uh this new generation of pels fans <laughs> that think expects to win every night I'm getting all pissed off because we've lost these uh last four games but we'll, we'll get back we get these next two games um coming up uh against the thunder and the spurs that should be both very winnable games right uh, and just talking about the uh bucks game real quick the bucks flat out like we, they just outscored us. They just outscored us. I mean, the Bucks deserved. Them. Yeah, we couldn't stop them. I mean, sure we got it within three or four points here and there, but were we really gonna win that game? I don't think so. Um, no, probably not. Um, but with Brandon Ingram, I think it's a different source. Yeah, I mean, to most teams in the league, and by most I mean almost every uh, team in the league doesn't have a matchup for Giannis defensively. But the Pelicans especially don't have a matchup for Giannis defensively. And uh, losing Larry Nance last night, who seems like maybe could be one of those guys that would maybe be best suited to guard Giannis, was a big deal. And no, Larry had... was definitely going to be our best Giannis stopper yesterday. And yeah, he was out. What, what you ended up with is Giannis against like either Herb Jones, Najee. who's not a great, not a great interior defender, or he got matched up with Najee Marshall a few times. And or he was getting matched up with centers, you know, and that's that was easy in transition for him. So yeah, you missing Larry Nance was a big deal. I thought it, I thought last night we would lose, and you know, kind of yeah, kinda I, didn't really, I didn't think we were gonna win last night either. But hey, Valanciunas showed us something, man. He definitely did. The last two games, he's played really well because um, he was great against the Suns as, too uh, on last Saturday. See, I know it's a Pelicans episode, but I just wanna talk about how well put together this Bucks team is. Like, they're, they have guys like Pat Connaughton, Grayson Allen, and Brooke Lopez. I mean, obviously, Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton. That all are plus three-point shooters. To put you know around really, Giannis, which is... Yeah. You know who really impressed me last night is uh, Javon Carter. Like, that dude can hoop. He, he was doing it both ends of the court. He's, I think, uh, above 40% three-point shooter. He had some well boneheaded as... turnovers, but yeah... For the most part. Yeah, he, he can defend, too. Um, yeah, so that was sure. impressive. But we can talk about the Pelicans missing Brandon Where did Javon Carter go to college? West Virginia. Good job. 
Yeah. Do you hear um, that yesterday on the telecast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't know that. Um, but uh, we can talk about the, the Pelicans missing Brandon Ingram, but the Bucks were also missing their three little scorer from Chris Middleton yeah. last night, um, who can at times look like prime Michael Jordan. So it's a really <laughs> deep team. It is. Yeah. There's times when Chris Middleton is a non factor, and there's times where he can drop 25 on you in a quarter. Yeah, well, we just saw that with Devin Booker. Devin Booker was different. I've never seen a player. I've never seen that with my own two eyes. I mean, he went on a stretch, scored twenty five straight points. I I guess we haven't. I guess we haven't even done a pod since that game. No, it's been a while. There was not much the Pelicans could have done about that. (laughs) Yeah, it was just tough buckets, and it was questionable foul calls. Questionable to say the least. It's difficult to defend when the refs are giving every call and you know you have to play with that see down the stretch i don't like down the stretch of games i don't see how refs call fouls so often yeah i think players tend to drive more down the stretch of games and they don't want to settle for like jump shots so that kind of puts more pressure on the refs um but the last two games i like i I told this to you earlier i don't like to complain about refereeing because I, I think do. it, I think in all it balances out more often than it doesn't. But the right. last two games, the Pelicans have gotten um, the short end uh, of the referee the stick. stick. Yeah. Uh, you look at it was what I think Willie Green said it after the Suns' loss. We're, you know, we're a top ten paint team. We're a top five team in free throw attempts. You know, as a result of that, and against the Suns, the entirety of our team had less free throw attempts than Devin Booker. That can't happen yeah. with a guy like Devin Booker, who, you know, is a uh, perimeter-oriented player primarily. And then last night, I think Giannis got to the line only two less times than the Pelicans' whole team. I think I yeah, Giannis I think got to the line accurate. like a ridiculous amount of times last night. See, the, the calls Giannis gets, I don't understand why Zion doesn't get the same calls, man. They They're do the fouls. same thing. They're fouls, but it's the same thing. And it's really, like, obvious that they're missing calls on Zion when they're going back down the court and giving the exact same calls to Giannis. Yeah, uh, it's really frustrating. Now, it's going to come in time for Zion, the the officiating, just as he uh, kind of gains more respect in the league. Cause that's just how it works. But I hope it does, because we need it. I mean, we've kind of been getting the shorter end of the stick all year. Yeah. Um. They they just still don't know how to officiate Zion Williamson, and no. it's difficult when he's been our number one scoring option in the last you know two three weeks without Brandon Ingram. Yeah, I still don't know a timeline for Brandon Ingram. I don't. Think I haven't really does. heard anything. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, hopefully he'll be back soon. But like, this is still the same team that went on a seven game win streak without him, so it's yeah. still a very capable group, but. Yeah, and hey, man, if we rattle off a few wins against the Thunder and Spurs, we're right back. Oh, definitely. We got a, a good chance to get to 20 wins uh, the next couple of games. And, but it's still missing our most uh, versatile scorer. And we saw that uh, it really hurt us last night when the Bucks had interior defenders like Giannis and uh, Burke Lopez. Yeah. Um, when do we play again? Is it tomorrow? Um, it's probably tomorrow, but I'm not exactly sure. I know I'm I'm targeting some games to go to over the break because uh we play like some less good teams so the tickets are easier. What a vocabulary usage yeah, step. That was it was very That was a masterclass. Let it be known that my English PSAT scores are elite. All right. So my vocab is solid. Anyway, yeah, dude, I'm my my English PSAT scores were so much better than my math. It was like, like unbelievable. My math was like 86 or something like that. No, we played. Why did they do this? They put us on Thursday against the Spurs. That's so weird. What do you but mean? Anyways, we, What's wrong with that? Like, just because they never play games on Thursday. There's only, and it's not like a marquee matchup, obviously. Oh, uh, I guess I hear you. Like, normally, no. you know how they put, they always put like the big markets like Chicago and New York on Thursday. So I don't know why uh, they put New Orleans and San Antonio. Um, That's not what I meant to do. But on another. Like kind of basketball note, uh, all star voting opened up today. I like to share my my twenty twenty two all star ballot as of now. So in my Let's Eastern, Con- 
my Eastern Conference backcourt, I have Jalen Brown and Donovan Mitchell. Um, Donovan Mitchell is, is easy. He has to be starting. And then Jalen Brown I have over uh, Trey Young just because Jalen Brown's been way more efficient. He's also on the better team, so I'll take him. Uh, my front court, I have uh, Giannis, KD, and um, who am I forgetting here? Tatum. And Tatum, yeah. Tatum's easy, so is Giannis. I find all I actually I find all of those picks easy just because MB's been kind of banged up for a lot of the season. And I the way I do all stars, I do front court and back court. I don't go by exact position. And then my Western Conference backcourt is Luca and SGA. SGA's been a first team all NBA this year, I think, in my mind. Yeah, yeah they just did another time. buzzer beater the other night. Yeah. And last, my, was that last night? Yeah, that was last night. He hit a little baseline, Jay, um, to win. And my front court is uh, Lamicky. Um, Watch your tone. <laughs> yeah, Lamicky, Zion, and uh, Jokic, because I think AD is going to be hurt for too long to to be an all-star for the first half of the season. Anthony Davis is a joke by now, man. Yeah. It, Bro was in midair, and he's out for the year that, or out for a month. Banged his foot on Jokic's leg, and he's now out for a month. It's just really interesting how often he gets hurt. <laughs> it's a joke, man. Because they they started to figure it out the Lakers with um AD. They started getting him in like more on ball screens, getting him in more screens uh, inside the perimeter. That opened up a lot for Russell Westbrook. And uh, as well as LeBron, those are both great passers. So they got him in on-ball screens. He's one of the best rollers in the league. But now with him out, I think it's all going to slow down for them again. Yeah. Now they're going to have to rely heavily on guys like Lonnie Walker. Yeah, Lonnie Walker's going to have to come up big for them, as he did earlier in the year. And then, um, you know, it's just heavier on LeBron. What tier is Talon Horton Tucker on now? Is he on the Jazz? He's on the Jazz. What people Lakers fans were expecting him to be Kobe reincarnated. That didn't work out. <laughs> no, it didn't. I like uh Nikhil's been getting minutes for the Jazz lately. Yeah, he, I saw he Shout got uh, he got like a few minutes against us and he, he didn't do bad. Us. Yeah, yeah. No, he saw he and Najee, he was like talking to Najee about it too. It's funny. Yeah, he's trash talking. Um at, any other Pelos takes here before I might get into like one or two other things. Um, uh, no, just don't overreact. I know it's a four-game losing streak. Your first, your initial reaction is to overreact. Uh, but take a step back. This team will be fine. Yeah, and coming up, we got two out of three home games against uh, all teams that are under 500. So very winnable games. Chance to get back uh, on top of the West um, heading towards Christmas. Christmas time. Not now, Sam. Not now. Not now. Uh, My biggest shout out of the podcast here would have to go to. I got my Argentina jersey. You can't see on the toaster I'm recording on. Yeah. uh, Connor's a Mbappe fanboy, but yeah. This man right here, number 10. This is the champion of the world. I got my Mbappe jersey in my closet. I got uh, his shoes up there. And Akila Mbappe soccer ball there. Champion of the world right here. Yeah, he's not the best Shout in the world. See, I'm I'm telling I'm getting a – once I get, like, a camera on this computer, I'm going to start getting my scenery going in the background for these. Yeah, dude, look, I got the flash and LED lights. Yeah, I know. You can't really even see it. Like, that's, that's a Barcelona thing back there. That's going to be a – I'm going to replace that with a spurt with a Tottenham one after Christmas probably. Yeah. And then I might just hang up random jerseys across my room. Um, yeah, see, I, I kind of wanted to do that. Just, like, I have a big, just, like, open wall, vacant yeah. wall right here. I just want to, you know. Yeah, no, I've got, like, too much stuff in my room because it's just, like, pennants everywhere and stuff. Yeah, I got so. a few pennants back up in there. Yeah, but um, anyways, that's, uh, that's kind of about it here. Just a quick little Pelicans episode. I wanted to talk about the GOAT. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Uh, Wait, Lakers do you have out. a? Do you have a? Your oh, do I have a roast? Yeah, your roast. If you want to talk about something for a little bit, I could probably come up with one. Um, you have to give me a sec. All right, yeah. So first thing I want to talk about, I was talking to Gianni about this. 
what an idiot the Argentinian goalkeeper is. You're, <laughs> that on was the funny. you're on the national stage and you decide to do that. What it an absolute still, idiot. It was still funny, though. I you don't care deny. how funny it was. Mbappe scored four times on you. <laughs> no, wait. No, yeah, he did. But, like, I don't know. He just won the World Cup. I'll give it to him. Okay. When France won the World Cup last year or four years ago, nobody did anything like that. Nobody's ever done anything like that. Yeah, but it was funny. Okay. I, I don't comical. care if it was funny. I didn't find it funny. <laughs> you have to be immature yeah. to find that funny. You're just mad because you're, you're an Mbappe fanboy and, and they lost. I am. That's just the reasoning. Um, let's see. A team to roast would be the um, – I'm trying to think of sports to go to here. Oh, this is the easiest one. Shout out to the um, shout out to Jacoby Myers for giving us that finish this weekend. That was <laughs> maybe the dumbest football play I have ever seen in my life. Because it's not even the end of overtime, right? It's the end of the fourth, so you can still go to overtime and win the game. It's not like we're talking about playing for a tie here. Yeah. You could just you could just get down, go to overtime. But instead, he threw the ball about 30 yards backwards across the whole <laughs> field to Mac Jones of all people. Like, it wasn't like you were throwing it to, like, Tyree Kill or something like that. Like, what was Mac Jones going to do? All you were doing, if, <laughs> if he was as successful as he hoped to be, then he would be throwing the ball to Mac Jones at about the 50-yard line, hoping that he could 1v11 the entire defense because there was nobody behind Mac Jones to lateral the ball to. So he was probably just going to get killed, even if he catches the ball. And he and still I had did get the- killed by a stiff arm. Yeah, and I had the Raiders defense in my fantasy league. That was in the playoffs in. So, shout out to Jacoby Myers because that was a a golden moment. Just a a great weekend in the NFL. A lot of good finishes. Yeah. um, It really doesn't get more bonehead than that. I mean, if I'm Belichick, I'm suspending him for the rest of the year. I don't care if he's my best receiver. (laughs) Yeah. Also, um, thank you to to Matt Ryan for choking again. The, The joke continues. He is a joke. Matt yeah, Ryan but, is a joke. Yeah, the, how the, the are you? Can continue. I don't understand how you consistently do it. I mean, he cursed the Falcons. I mean, you've seen like Falcons blow enormous leads, <laughs> like they'd oh, be yeah. up ten points with a minute and a half left and lose. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you to Matt Ryan for continuing the meme, and uh, the Saints won. Yeah, that's, game. that's about it. And thank you to Jacoby Myers for just a a great six points to add to my fantasy total. Um, Is that in La Liga? Yeah, that was. I still lost because uh, screw Alan Lazard. He got a one last night. I would have <laughs> won. I needed him to get like a nine. He killed me. But yeah, anyways, that um, that's about it. A little bit of a shorter episode. Thank you all for the continued support. Thank you if you made it all the way through the end of this episode. Um, Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's about it here. Uh, let's cue the intro. Sam, Sam and CD. CD and Sam.